Hello and welcome to News Click. Today on our science discussions, we have D. Raghunandan, and we're going to discuss what we had discussed in News Click last week. That how do we look at the space flights which are taking place? We had earlier the Virgin uh, space space flight that took place. Now we have also the space flight of Jeff Jeff Bezos, and uh, he seems to have done. Again, another suborbital flight. We discussed the difference between suborbital and a really a proper orbiting spacecraft. But it did cross what is called the von Karman line, which is supposed to be the the point where space really starts. Raghu, again, the question is: What does it signify in terms of the rockets, the engine? We had discussed this last time also with respect to the Virgin uh, space program. and we had said it seems to be relatively less powerful and uh, less versatile than what we are talking about as space flight this is also not what for instance tesla has been doing more powerful engines but it seems to be be a little more ambitious than the virgin galactic space space flight uh, well uh, yes and no in the sense that uh, uh, the virgin galactic uh, rocket uh, idea uh, and the design of the space plane uh, as a reusable craft which is uh, lands like an aircraft like the space shuttle uh, was and is able to maneuver through the uh, once it has re-entered the atmosphere it's able to maneuver and glide aerodynamically till it makes its uh, landing now that gives uh, virgin one advantage in what it is looking at possibly which is that uh, tomorrow if it uh, has a larger uh, vehicle with uh, more passengers uh, then it can translate this idea into a hypersonic aircraft uh, which then using uh, traveling at speeds higher than uh, sound would be able to ferry passengers from a to b uh, wherever across the oceans and so on so and since virgin is a largely aircraft company i think they would uh, they would have an interest in that uh, design now as far as uh, the blue origin is concerned that is really not their target market uh they are looking at this purely as a space uh, venture uh, whereas i think virgin galactic can be looking at a hybrid model between space and aircraft uh, the blue origin is purely a space uh, uh, venture uh, if they are aiming at space tourism as they say then at best they can have a slightly larger crew uh, module where they can have a few more passengers uh, and give them a joy ride uh, into space and back but at this power of their rocket uh, engines uh, and a suborbital uh, flight they will not even be able to go to the space station uh, for example all that they can do is to put a few satellites into very low earth orbit uh which uh, any number of other uh, launchers are doing today so it doesn't give them any great advantage there so their only market now that i can see is a limited and rather restricted one of space tourism and frankly speaking having watched both the launches uh, live of course there are the usual howls and shrieks of delight coming from the uh, capsule but an 11 minute uh, trip which includes a few minute of weightlessness uh, for any number of hundreds of thousands of dollars to my mind doesn't really is not really a great hot sell uh, and virgin galactic despite the fact that it's the same time period in space that they experience they give you at least an hour and a half ride which is like uh, the difference between the hindi film and a hollywood film 
the hindi film at least gives you 3 hours inside an air conditioned cinema with popcorn uh, thrown in whereas a hollywood movie will give you 90 minutes at best uh, and india being a price conscious country and many other passengers will perhaps find a 11 minute thriller uh, they'll feel a bit short changed i think well lagu you've also talked earlier about the possibility of a hypersonic passenger aircraft to yes. be at current economics of it it doesn't yes. look a long you know unless something radically changes doesn't look that easy also and secondly you have also land based systems like maglev which you can discuss another day developing which seems to show that there's a whole range of uh, transport op- options available and if we look at all of that maybe hypersonic is still something which economically will have to justify yeah. itself in a very different way but looking at the current technologies they are supposed to be playing for a market which is essentially what nasa was originally the sole monopoly from which it is withdrawing and of course we have the tesla coming in but if you look at all the rocket engines and this is where really the united states was well behind uh, the soviet union which is something that people were not aware of till the 1990s when we found that you know russians were selling then the rd engine to the united states and they switched almost entirely to the russian engines for their space flight also what you talked about the international space station was serviced then by the soviet uh, air to the soyuz spacecraft so looking at the engines do you think with now putting tesla also into play because tesla has been servicing the space shuttle market and it has been doing first uh, sending other stuff basically not human beings and now also taking over ferrying uh, people uh, astronauts into the space station do you think that this three players are in some sense the future inheritors of the of what nasa was doing and they will gradually become private players in space at least for the americans yeah i think at least uh, at present uh, between the three uh, i think um, elon musk with his spacex uh, range of uh, uh, rockets uh, is ahead of the other two in that uh, regard he's got a more powerful rocket he is seriously into the launch markets whereas uh, neither virgin galactic nor uh, blue origin offer any great uh, services in terms of launches given the uh, low altitudes to which they are able to uh, reach which will hardly sustain satellites for earth observation or any of those uh, purposes but uh, Uh, i think the spacex range is actually seriously vying for a large part of the nasa subcontracted space market uh, that is where i think uh, at least elon musk is uh, pushing uh, for he is already now ferrying crew to uh, crew and uh, cargo to the space station uh he is also planning to launch his own space station uh sometime in the uh, future so he'll have a private space station there which will then offer services for scientists for astronauts from, from the us from other countries to go spend time in the space station do scientific experiments uh, etc as well as space tourists to go and spend longer time in the uh, space station as we spoke about last time when uh, the first space tourist went aboard the soyuz aircraft to the space station way back uh, uh, in 2001 he spent 7 days there so the virgin galactic quick trip to space is not really a first uh, in that sense it's been done before uh, so elon musk can offer that longer stints at the space station and if his plans work out the way he wants he would be able to or he is aiming to develop a rocket close to the performance at least of the atlas range which is based on the russian 
RD120 rocket engines that you uh, spoke of, uh, he would at least be able to, his current range of rockets is aiming at roughly twice the power uh, of the Atlas V uh, series, not yet reaching the kind of power that the Saturn V uh, had. All of this, of course, Raghu, is at the moment subsidized entirely by NASA. Because all the current projects he has had, he has some development expenditure he's incurred, but most of the really money is coming for public uh, funding, which is really yeah. the NASA funding. So all, all of this could also be hype as a marketing hype to see that NASA doesn't invest in its own programs, but subcontracts all of this to Elon Musk and Tesla. So how much is hype and how much is not is something we need to see in the future. Sure. But looking at the engines per se, comparing yeah. it to the Russian advance, as you know, the Russian engines we were talking about for Atlas uh, range five were really relatively older engines. They have gone yeah. considerably beyond that. But if you look at the engines, how do they compare to the current generation of Russian engines? Yeah. Well, the Russians haven't, unfortunately for them, they had a very large advantage over any American uh, Why rival. do you call it unfortunate? No, I'm saying they had this uh, this lead then, but unfortunately they have not built on that because uh, they stopped working on their engines uh, after the Soviet uh, collapse. They've not been able to invest the kind of money they wanted on their rocket uh, program. So while they earlier had this very big advantage over the uh, Americans, unless they now invest a lot of money uh, to rebuild their rocket program, to build new, more powerful uh, rockets, which reports are that they are trying with Chinese investment, uh, uh, if required, uh, because as you know, the Chinese uh, rocket program has largely been built again on building on the Russian rockets of yes. that uh, generation, which NASA didn't do. Uh, when the Americans took the Russian RD-180, they hardly worked on that to take it further and develop it. It just stayed where it was. So now it is up to players like Musk and there are a couple of others uh, who are also trying it. The Blue Origin efforts, I think, are quite far behind. But there are a few other players in the rocket engine uh, market. But can we look at the, the Russian and the Chinese a little more? Yeah. Yeah. So as, as far as I can see, the Russians today and the Chinese both have rocket engines which are very powerful, uh, go beyond the Atlas uh, range capability. Uh, in terms of lift capability, currently the Falcon uh, Heavy uh, of uh, uh, Elon Musk is roughly about twice the amount, the power uh, generated of any comparable rocket uh, flying, but that's not the only parameter uh, uh, that we have to go by. It's also a question of what speeds you're able to uh, reach and uh, whether you're able to make a shot to the moon uh, directly, which of course, now the Chinese have shown through their soft landing uh, on the moon, their uh, efforts at uh, Mars, uh, they are not behind uh, on that either. And both the Russians and the Chinese, the Chinese in particular, are aided by the fact that they have developed and built on these technologies for their uh, ICBMs, uh, which of course have much longer range uh, there. And therefore, they are at par in terms of the distances they can reach. Now, what remains to be seen is how much payload can they carry to those uh, distances. And that's where I think if at all Elon Musk is going to compete, he'll have more competitors in Russia and China than he will inside the United States at present. So have you seen the re just recently what was launched by Russia, the Nauka uh, space station module, which right. seems to be the heaviest module that has been transported right. to the space right. station. I think it right. weighs about nine tons. Right. So Given that, do you think that indicates the Proton-M rocket is what they yes. use? Do you think yes. that is a 
something which you also should be observing what what is the yes yes in? the proton 9 is an advance if i'm not mistaken the proton 9 i think has a uh, how much was it it's about what 705 tons of uh, thrust uh, elon musk space falcon heavy is able to match that in terms of thrust and uh, the payload delivery uh, up to uh, low earth orbit Uh, is matched by spacex so that part of it i think is not uh, a big challenge in terms of uh, reach that's able to do uh, elon musk's challenge i think is his next step which is to go beyond uh, that where his engines are currently experimental uh, in his so called spaceship uh, venture which have so far been tested only up to 1/3 of the uh orbital uh, altitude which he is aiming at uh, so unless he actually succeeds at an orbital uh, altitude we don't know how uh, he stands in terms of uh, the development of that technology so broadly speaking as of now bezos and uh, branson seem to be uh, rich boys club trying to play with very very expensive toys but yeah. as far as elon musk is concerned tesla is concerned you think that Fal- falcon range and the kind of things he's planning to do has at least more uh, potential and could Shows be promise. players could be players yeah, in the future yeah except that now uh, interestingly watching all this happen nasa has been getting a little jealous and has also decided to re-enter the game and is beginning to invest once more uh, into its own program launch services with other launch partners uh, in which the leader is the old legacy launch partner the united launch uh, agency in which boeing is a uh, part uh, and they are trying to revive that nasa is also developing its own engine uh, which is not rd180 uh based so we'll have to see how that goes because after all nasa has got deeper pockets uh, than elon musk uh given state support uh so we need to see how that goes but uh, at least between the billionaires in the billionaires race that we've been talking about it seems to me that elon musk is uh, far ahead his biggest challenge there is one the technology of the larger rockets which is aiming at for the space flight program and where does he get the money from uh, well, for it's it? very clear where he gets the money from at the yeah. moment from nasa so yeah. nasa's so, deep white pockets are also yeah. going to help elon musk yeah. but as we have said earlier giving up a technology dismantling your own infrastructure building it back is not that easy not right in case they had the icbm at least yes. that technology at least yeah absolutely shown, shown also that they have not fallen absolutely. behind on missile Absolutely. technologies so Absolutely. given that and what the, what you said about the chinese chinese have deep pockets too so given yes. all of that we have interesting is possibility in the space era opening up of course very interesting uh, i would say i don't know about ragu and i'm going to conclude this session by saying that as of now space is still for scientific exploration it has not reached any commercial stage so the commercial possibilities are only for again the rich boys play toys but it is not for any serious purpose the serious right. purpose would still be scientific exploration communication if you will and this is basically the reserve of the nation states still and of course the big nation states who have as ragu said deep pocket thank you very much ragu for being with us explaining all the technical issues involved i'm sure that our listeners will not really our viewers really will not you know be following the details of a lot of the things you have said some of it has also gone past what uh, you explained to me but hopefully this will interest all of us to go back look at all of these issues with new eyes thank you very much this is all the time we have for news click today do keep thank watching you. news click and also visit our website Thank you.